I came close a couple times, but at the time of making this video, Tenza's 1048 still sits on top and it doesn't look like it'll be beaten anytime soon. Well, that didn't age well. So a few months ago, I made this video describing me and Tenza's epic race for the Solo Crota world record. Here's the TLDR of it. I start running, Tenz beats me to world record, I almost get world record three times, and Tenz gets times that are faster than anyone thought possible. I honestly thought that that was the end of it. Maybe one of us would do a couple runs here or there, but I never thought that the race would re-emerge more ferocious than ever. The date was January 16th. Tenz, after a hard-fought race, finally hit the world's first sub-11 minute solo crota with a 10.54. This time was nothing short of shocking. A sub 11 minute time had been theorized for a while, but it required a run so flawless, with such good RNG, no one was sure it would happen. But once again, Tens broke the newest minute barrier. A few days later, on January 25th, I was stuck at 11 minutes and 29 seconds, and I hit a new PB of 11.22. That same day, Tens went even farther to cement his dominance with a 10.48. The race between me and Tenz was over. Not only was I nearly 40 seconds behind him, but Tenz was almost a full minute faster than Baxley's previous world record that stood for three years. At this point, I had no hope of catching up to the rogue Aussie. After years of grinding, nothing was going to change the fact that Tenz was the best solo Crota runner alive. Over a month of on and off attempts later, I finally hit a new PB. 11 minutes, 14 seconds. Nothing crazy, and not even that noteworthy of a run. But something happened. I started to feel better. Hopeful, even. And two attempts later, I get on the God Run. Oh my god! <laughs> it happened. It happened. It freaking happened. 52. 52. Two and a half months of attempts, I finally get a sub 11 time. Did I beat world record? No. I was still four seconds behind tens. But here's the crazy part. For the first time in over 700 attempts, 11 personal bests, and one tied world record, I was satisfied. I didn't want to run anymore. Over the next few days, the desire to get the world record faded. I was perfectly fine with being the second person to get a sub-11 time. So at Tenz's 1048 and my 1052, the solo Crota speedrun category lay dormant once again. Yes. Yes, come on. Yeah! Oh, oh my god, oh my god. Oh fuck, please, 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 please. Oh, that please. Sub 1147, I'm asking you. Oh my god! Over three months later, on June 16th, Insane Gamer 300 becomes the fourth person ever to get a sub 12 time. Congrats to him, but this new challenger woke me back up. For a couple weeks, I'd been thinking on going back. The old, oh come on, it's only four seconds, you can beat that. But I didn't have enough motivation to start. This new time set gave me that motivation. So the next day, June 17th, me and Tens got back to doing runs. Attempt after attempt, nothing was improving. 10.52 felt too much to top. I was grinding six to eight hours a day with next to no improvement. On June 25th, I had to leave town for a short trip. And on the next day, Tens went even further, proving his dominance with a 1044, the new world record. 
With an already god tier run, Tens made the claim that he would be chasing a 1030x. Could anything stop this tremendous streak? Was that? Dad! 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 PB! Oh my god! Finally! <laughs> After two weeks of attempts on June 30th, not only did I hit a personal best, but I was now only one second behind world record. Any optimization on any part of the run would likely result in me finally getting a world record. But on July 3rd, the unthinkable happened. And this would come to be known as the worst day in Crota speedrunning history. This run would haunt me for a while. Because I threw the third grenade a quarter second too early, it exploded on Crota's gold shield and thus did no damage. What would have been a 1033-ish run, a world record by over 10 seconds at the time, was nothing more than a failed run. A couple hours later, Ten sends me this screenshot. Apparently, Thrallway has a glitch where if you jump incorrectly, the final checkpoint won't be hit and you'll have to waste nearly 14 seconds re-jumping over the hill. If he had stayed on this pace, this would have been a 10-19. That is insane. And while both of these runs hurt very much, they both prove something. The Solo Crota World Record can go much, much lower. On July 5th, Tens hit yet again another world record with a 1039. Yes, this was only 6 seconds faster than me, but it felt ridiculously impossible. For attempt after attempt, I quickly found out that shaving 6 seconds off my time was going to be a lot harder than I originally thought. I was streaming nearly every day for hundreds of attempts, but nothing seemed to be working. And then, nearly 2 weeks later, on July 17th, this happened. Oh, please, 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 please. I know I counted that right. I know I counted that right. Please be a PB. That's definitely not world record. It's a freaking 44. But please tell me that's, please tell me that's PB. Please tell me that's a 44. I would love a 44. I would be so, so thankful for a 44. I would, I would love a 44. It's a 44. That's a PB. Not very satisfying. Yeah. It was only a one second time save, but the potential was there. Here. Let me teach you something about solo Crota runs. Once you finish bridge, knights start to spawn. This part of the run has been dubbed Sword Party. Now Sword Party can start in one of two ways. Usually, there is an eight-ish second delay between killing the last four adds and the Sword Party starting. However, it's been estimated that there is about a 10 to 15% chance you get what is called Fast Knights. Fast Knights is exactly what it sounds like. The knights spawn fast. They actually spawn basically instantly. This used to be a nice to have, but now having or not having fast nights can literally make or break runs, like it did in my most recent PB, the 1044. See, my 1044 didn't have fast nights, which cost me eight seconds. And since the world record was only six seconds away, my run lost world record due to one factor of RNG. This is the level of precision the Solo Crota speedrun has come to. And not to make this record even harder, but that same day, a new runner emerged. Hey, hey, A4 Harry, one of the top six-man Crota runners, decided to give solo runs a try. 
And as his first run, he hit a 10.55. Out of nowhere, Harry becomes the third person ever to get a sub-11 time. This new runner put a pressure on me and tens like never before. Could there be a new contender for the Solo Crota world record? Harry started to put a lot of time into runs, and while he got close a couple times, he ultimately decided to go a different route. I'm going to save this discussion for another video, but doing this speedrun on a Titan has always been theorized, but never fully tested. Harry decided to start routing out the Titan strap. Only time will tell what time he ultimately sets. Was that a 43? Was that a 43? The day after my new PB, I hit it again. The same time, a 1044. This one hurt far more than the last one. Was I done? Was this my plateau? Honestly, I wasn't sure. At this time, I was discussing with tens on our runs and combined, we were putting in around 150 attempts and 20 hours a day. Both of us wanted nothing more to reclaim the times we so nearly had. However, at the last second, Something happened that no one was expecting. Tied world record. Okay. I'm mad about that one because I want world record. We tied world record. We tied world record. Another world record tie. Yes, I said another. Back in January of this year, when the world record was 11 minutes and 33 seconds, me and Ten shared the world record. Of all the times to hit, with all the random patterns and encounters, what were the odds that a second tie would happen? But with this, me and Ten started grinding harder and harder. On July 25th, from the farthest left field possible, A4 Harry returned to Warlock Runs and snagged the new world record with a 10.30. Crota suddenly had a three-way race. Well, two-way. A few days later, Tens had to hang up his controller. Remember in my last video when I said Tens had some health problems with his thumbs? Well, after nearly two months of 10 to 13 hours a day of grinding, they started acting up again. Tens had to take a break and let his thumbs heal up. I know YouTube videos don't normally have this, but if you could, please go down to the description and give Tens a follow on Twitter and YouTube. The man is a god-tier Destiny player and deserves all the praise and support in the world. I hope he's able to return to Crota Run soon. With 10s effectively out, Harry stated that he would be stopping runs until his 1035 was beaten. So I got to work, and on the very next day, July 26th, this happened. Line him up. Please. Okay, that's it. One, two. Did we just get a 39 again? Did we literally just get a 39 again? For a second time, I had hit a 1039. Still tied with 10s. How on earth did this happen? Honestly, I don't know. The odds of a 1039 happening basically back to back are staggeringly low. With more determination than ever before, I got back to doing runs, with streams lasting between 6 to 8 hours a day. I was grinding my heart out, and 5 days later, July 31st, literally the impossible happened. One, two. You're kidding me! Another... It usually rounds up, but for the love of God, round down. Are you kidding? <laughs> I'm not even mad, honestly. I feel like I'm cracking up just because of how freaking funny that is. Not once, not twice, but three times, I hit a 10.39. 
Stunned is too light of a word. This was becoming ludicrous. I was hitting times that were on low to mid 1020 pace, but the one run I actually complete was yet again a 1039. Was this where I was destined to stop? Was my limit a 1039? I asked literally everyone I knew for advice or strategy changes. A couple things were changed, but ultimately it was going to come down to grit, determination, and a never ending grind. This video is already getting a little long, so I'll wrap it up. Spoiler alert, I did get a faster time than a 1039 eventually, but I got a faster time in the only way I knew how. For the third time in my career, I had tied the Solo Crota speedrun world record. At this point, are we really even surprised anymore? The Solo Crota time is getting so optimized, nothing should surprise us anymore, let alone another tie. With Tens having to take a medical leave of absence, Harry moving on to other areas, and me literally moving cross country, this is currently where the record stands. These last eight months have been some of the most intense and thrilling times I've ever had the honor of experiencing in Destiny. I've left all the runner socials in the description below. Please go follow them. Now, some of you may ask, how low could the solo Crota time go? Well, I've spoken about that very thing with Tens and Harry, and we all agreed that the human limit with current strats is likely to be between 10.05 and 10.10. That being said, the best segmented time is a 9.55. Is a sub 10 possible? Maybe. We'll just have to wait and see. Okay, I'm going off script a little bit here, but I do want to thank Tens and Harry for being just absolute legends. It's been an honor to run against them. Between the three of us, we've put between 5,000 attempts and over 500 hours into this amazing raid. I want to thank you guys personally. Seriously, you're awesome. And for everyone watching this video, I really appreciate you stopping by. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. It really does support the channel. And I'll see you next time, guys.